Hi there, welcome to Hearthside Blog. My name is Michelle. I am the author on this blog and I am on to hot take two of the day. I'm just trying to finish up some stuff that I had sort of semi-finished in my queue. It's not the big stuff that I was talking about that I just haven't had the time to get to and get where I want it to be. But um, this is about modern heathen feuding, basically. And I'm specifically focusing on in the Canadian context, but that's primarily because of the list that I upkeep on the inclusive heathen groups within Canada. There's only 13 inclusive heathen kindreds in Canada that I'm aware of. If you have another one, please contact me so I can add it. Um, and what I've noticed upkeeping this list is that although we have 13 provinces and territories, the groups are not evenly dispersed between these provinces and territories. This isn't surprising due to different population sizes, etc. Um, most of the kindreds exist within larger centers. Um, but what I've also noticed is that Sometimes more than one exists in the same community or very close to each other um, geographically. And I'm wondering, like, why why is that? And based on the data that I have, um, I cannot help but wonder if it has to do with disagreements between tribes. Now, this is not something that is specific to Canada. I know that... Heathens around the world have disagreements um, that can lead to tribes splitting up. Um, it could be about personalities, it could be about theology, it could be about something more serious. Um, I think the majority of them are about theology and about personality, um, from what I can tell. And... Why I'm concerned about this is if there's only 13 inclusive heathen kindreds in Canada, that's not very many, and we need to work together. So my question is, are these groups able to work together um, and come together when it's necessary? And I think that sometimes... We as heathens can be very proud, and this is both true historically and in modern times, but we shouldn't be letting our egos get, in, get into the way of progress. And I think that sometimes we take the idea of historical feuds within heathenry um, a little bit too seriously because... It doesn't really fit the modern times in the way that it did historically. And what I mean by that is that the historical reasons for having feuds were to do with the tribe's survival. Um, and a slight against your kin could have a threat to the livelihood of the whole communi community. Um... In modern times, we're not living and working together in that same sort of close-knit way. So this is now becoming more of a battle of egos. And I, of course, had to uh, consult everyone's favorite book. Yeah, I'm being facetious. But uh, you are certainly welcome to read it. And I will point you to the right chapter in just a second. If you're not familiar with this book, it's definitely a great book. Uh, it's available in hard copy. It's also available in PDFs for free online. You can Google it. But definitely worth the money if you have the money to spend. It is a bit pricey. It is fairly dry. So I'm paraphrasing for those of you who don't want to read it or have tried to read it and didn't get through it. But um, I'm specifically talking hear about chapter two on honor, a little bit about chapter three, which is also on honor. Chapter three is called Honor, the Soul of the Clan. Uh, but primarily chapter two. And what we see here is they're talking about 
the concept of honor and how it's related to feuding historically. So if there's a slight against a person or their tribe, then reparation is asked for. This would be in the form of gold, usually, as a shield price for a misdeed. Um, and if the reparation does not occur, then this means that revenge is going to be sought, leading to a possible feud between tribes. This sort of uh, feud usually occurs, for example, if a kinsman is slain and would be seen as a blood feud. There also instances where it occurs if the honor of a man is tarnished. Now, we have to look at what they mean historically by the honor of a man being tarnished, and we see in chapter three that they're talking about um, it's usually an insult to someone of higher station, um, a king, for example, and it's believed that men of higher station, and I say men because historically this seemed to occur almost almost exclusively with men, that if a man's honor was tarnished, men of higher stations were considered to be more sensitive to this sort of slight. Um, there are instances of blood feuds where instead of a man being slain, it was a woman, but when it comes to honor, it seems to be men who are affected by this in the historical text. Um, and there are these blood feuds that occur between tribes, but they're actually not as common as you would think. Um, I looked at a couple other different articles on the topic of feuding. I will include the information for them below. And um, what it was saying was that usually the type of feud that actually occurred would have been what would have been seen as a ritual feud. And this is where it was believed that a single act of revenge would resolve the imbalance between parties. Um, it wouldn't be an ongoing relationship of feuding. And this sort of feud was usually engaged in within courts to balance power, um, whereas the blood feuds would last for generations and were destructive to luck and power of both parties. So as I say, the blood feuds were actually fairly uncommon and their purpose was actually surprisingly political. It wasn't as much about the slight as you would think. I mean, obviously tempers would run hot if someone was slain, for example, and that would lead to a revenge killing quite likely, even if a shield price was paid. Um, but the real reason for blood feuds seems to be more so that it was preventing any family from having a long-term rule over an area. Um, having a th threat constantly of these people being usurped from power and creating a balance of power, basically, between different groups. Um, so the feud was what legitimized the use of violence between parties. So if we're looking at all of this in the modern con con in the modern uh, context, it just doesn't make sense. And that's because, well, we don't really have any heathen kings, for example, none that I'm aware of. Um, and the likelihood of one heathen killing another, also very unlikely. So the type of um, conflicts that we're having in modern times are mostly those of personalities. Um, and since neither party is of a higher standing, everyone's pretty much considered equal, then there's no reason to be emulating historical feuding practices. Um, so why are we still attached to this antiquated concept of feuding 
um, rather than resolving our problems within our own communities. And I think the reason why is, well, it's just easier. It takes two willing parties in order to sit down, have a discussion. But I think that we need to aim for this um, in our communities, at least creating working relationships between different tribes, uh, even if friendships may be out. So yeah, that's my uh, unpopular take. Um, Second one of the day, probably. I'm pretty sure that my other one was a little bit controversial already um just for the sake of making it less confusing even though i'm uploading this today i will not be adding it to the social media until tomorrow just to give the other post a little bit of a boost before i post this one but it will be on my blog and here on youtube if you check it out early if you happen to stumble upon it that's about it and yeah hopefully i get to the bigger stuff in the next month or two we'll just see how it goes and yeah see you when i see ya